of innovation you can do. I think a greater level of innovation for him with Shadow Rider Calyrex. Yeah, for sure. So let's get into game one. Our first win and in of the weekend here. You have Javier Senorena on the bottom of your screen with Maridon Incineroar and Hirofumi Kimura or Shifu Fluttermane on the top of your screen. Fun matchup here. You have potentially a lot of damage going either direction. Uh, Fluttermane going to uh, make things a little bit more difficult for this Maradon. Remind us of a time when Fluttermane was kind of the <laughs> apex predator of VGC, threatening the potential of some powerful fairy type attacks into the currently fairy weak Miraidon. Right, and Maridon, one of those strongest, uh, one of the strong restrictors, but one of the big adjustments in the metagame has gone from either Terra, uh, Terra Electric or anything like that. Most Maridon, including Javier's, are now Terra Fairy to get out of that Fairy weakness. And as you see the Pokemon in the back here, I think we're probably all excited to see what this Iron Hands can do. Uh, but that really is a fun look on this team, right? I think we often kind of just see the restricted Pokemon and a bunch of supportive Pokemon. Uh, there's three different Pokemon on this team that can do some serious damage. Yeah, but some of those Pokemon in the backs we saw would not appreciate a Dazzling Gleam coming their way if they want. If Javier wants to switch one of them in, he will. Incineroar swapping out here on turn one, not going for a fake out onto Hirofumi's side of the field. Instead, Iron Hand's gonna swap in, activating that Electric Seed held item, boosting its defense by one stage. And then of course, thanks to its ability, Quark Drive from its friend Maridon, giving it uh, an attack boost. So two boosts for the price of one what type of deal is that going to be for javier terrestrializing out of that dragon typing into the fairy this time around now dazzling gleams will not be super effective from here fumi's fluttermane let's see what happens fluttermane not attacking just protecting here on this turn now it's going to be up to the uh or shifu protecting as well so now maridon's not going to get any damage yeah, I mean, the, so uh, a little scouting turn for Hirofumi there, but I don't know if you're that upset if you're Javier. You, know, you get everything uh, set up, you get your iron hands out in the field. I really do feel like that looks like a great Pokemon this matchup, right? Uh, it be very difficult for that Calyrex potentially to deal with it, and uh, it is now Miradon's job just to kind of trade with this Fluttermane, right? Uh, it is super effective against the Iron Hands, so a little awkward there, you know, no longer going to have the option of terrestrializing since Miradon has used it already, but, you know, if Javier can get rid of that Fluttermane, potentially Iron Hands could be looking pretty good in this matchup. Yeah, Iron Hands can no longer terrestrialize out of that weakness, right, because Maridon opted to Terra Fairy on the first turn here for Javier. So Javier will swap Urshifu into that slot. This is a Dazzling Gleam that's super effective on both, but of course the uh, Iron Hands is really bulky, so it really doesn't take too much damage. And Urshifu is going to take out its brethren on the other side with those resisted, but yet always critically striking, surging strikes here. A rough game for that Urshifu, but uh, perhaps doing what it needs to do there, allowing some damage to go down onto the Fluttermane, uh, maybe putting it in range where a Dazzling Gleam could do some serious work on this turn. Now Maridon will swap out. Remember, this is a choice specs Maridon, which is ma many of the Maridon are. You want to lock into one attack at the boost of 50% more damage. Of course, you can only click that attack, so that's why Javier switched it out that prior turn. Reset its attack here uh, and try to, you know, maybe go for Volt Switch turns or, or just maybe just as much damage as you can do. Yeah, so it's sort of an interesting spot here where um, Javier still can't really set up with this Iron Hands without trading really aggressively, where that Focus Sash on Urshifu could be big. There's the target into the Maridon. Doesn't even bring it down to half HP, though. And there's Dazzling Gleam. Spread attack, knocks out the Fluttermane, brings Urshifu down to its Focus Sash. So a lot of damage from this Terra Fairy Maridon. Remember, you get the boost as well now that you're a Fairy type. So it's a lot of damage. Surging Strikes in response, though, from this Urshifu. It's going to hit three times guaranteed. And on the third strike, Maridon goes down. But I expect at the end of the turn iron hands is going to be the only pokemon left on the field as it can just take ko the one hp or shifu it could although i guess the swords dance could be an option as well but yeah we do see it just picking up this easy knockout and uh the pokemon are falling quickly now both sides down to just two pokemon uh we've seen incineroar as uh, the remaining Pokemon for Javier. We'll have to see what Hirofumi's got in the back. If it is a physical attacker, that's going to have its damage output hindered thanks to Incineroar's Intimidate. But Hirofumi finally revealing his last Pokemon. Of course, the Calyrex Ice Rider, his restricted Pokemon of choice, and the Raging Bolt. They are full HP, but because of the moves or the item choice here for Calyrex Ice Rider, this Intimidate will stick. It's never melt ice instead of Clear Ambulance. Yeah, it could be a big deal here, right? This is a strange match. 
matchup, but hey, you know, maybe there's a world you'll get a fake out from Incineroar here, use that Swords Dance, and uh, perhaps it can drain its way through this game. You know, uh, the Raging Bolt on the opposing side really going to need to use its uh, Draco Meteor attack probably to do realistic damage to this Iron Hands, and hey, you know, if you can survive it, drain that HP back, uh, maybe you put it in a tough spot. And the Iron Hands, remember that that defense boost is going to stick no matter what. It activates right when Electric Terrain ends, so sure, Quark Drive will go away when the terrain is over, but the defense boost helping against the, the in now intimidated Glacial Lances, you're always going to be coming out on top from those drain punches. Of course, there is still that high horsepower, which will remain super effective, I guess actually on both of these Pokemon, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, my plus one defense, Iron Hands, Calc to a little rusty, so uh, we'll have to see how this one plays out. Yeah, we're going to have to find out here what Hirafumi has in store for the ending of this game one against Javier. It's time to Terra Poison. That's the other difference here. You'll usually see Terra Fair, or excuse me, Terra Fire, Terra Grass, Terra Water on Calyrex X Ice Rider, but no, here for me at 5 0 at the World Championships with Terra Poison in this slot. Detect from the Iron Hands not to take any damage on this turn for Javier's end. And the Incineroar attack goes towards the Raging Bolt Protect. So Raging Bolt's gonna keep itself safe. Glacial Lance, though, is only gonna go into Incineroar. It's intimidated and resisted. So really not anticipating too much damage there. Yeah, Incineroar doesn't care too much, but uh, it does get foiled in its attempt to knock out that Life Orb from the Raging Bolt. Uh, you know, Iron Hands has already been weakened, so you really don't want to take both those attacks, right? It's probably too dangerous to try to go for a Swords Dance or even a Drain Punch here. So, uh, you know, perhaps go for a Double Protect. Hope you can knock off that Life Orb. Uh, and oh no, it's not going to happen. No, he doesn't get the Double Protect. Javier, you see the sadness on his face. Draco Meteor does connect onto Iron Hands at the cost of two stages of Special Attack. You will certainly take out knocking out the Iron Hands. And now it is Incineroar versus the world right now. The Stomping Tantrum will be super effective into that slot. But the knockoff brings Raging Bolt down to about 60% of its HP. Instead, going for the single target Glacial uh, glacial Lance instead. Yeah, probably feeling safe enough with this, right? Where uh, even though it's uh, you know a slow but sure way to pick this knockout, uh, Javier realizes that there's no way he's going to be able to get his way out of this one. And Hirofumi takes game one. Yeah, that was a really back and forth game one. I felt like Javier had a really strong start to it, but once here Fumi was able to bring in the, the Cower X there, even while intimidated, he just, he wasn't too concerned because he knew the Iron Hands, even if it is a check to my Cower X, it's not gonna get an attack off onto my Restricted. Yeah, and like uh, as much as that uh, you know, Iron Hands seems like it'd be a problematic Pokemon for this uh, Calyrex to take out, the rest of the team handles it pretty well there, right? You know, Flutterman was the biggest check, but we see how poorly things went against the Raging Bolt while the Electric Terrain was still active. And then even Urshifu, right, even though it loses that matchup one-on-one, -on -one, ignoring the Electric Seed because of uh, the automatic critical hits. Yeah, I think this, there are similarities on these teams, right? They, uh, you know, there are like the uh, Urshifus and, and Cineroar and, and whatnot, but it's really the differences in where where it counts, like your restricted Pokemon, uh, the fastest you can be in Maridon versus the slowest you can possibly have in Cowards. But it's not just their speed series, it's when you're deciding to bring them on the field. Javier kind of uh, kind of committed to the terrestrialization too early, attacked into Protects, had to actually swap out because of the Choice Specs item. So kind of a, a, bit, a little bit too much of committing early on, where Hirofumi kept his flexibility throughout the match, waited for the right time to terrestrialize. Yeah, I mean, I think that was a very disastrous start for the game for Javier. We just, uh, even though it seemed like he was trading Pokemon equally, they weren't Pokemon of equal value, plus right. he taken more damage. All right, so let's see what Javier can do to force a game three. If not, Hirofumi will be one of the first trainers qualified for day two of the World Championships tomorrow with one more victory. It's Calyrex Ice Rider and Ogre Pond Cornerstone versus Maradon and Iron Leaves. Iron Leaves is real, Scott. Yeah, I, I was a little surprised. I wasn't sure we could see it, but uh, perhaps uh, looking for a little more immediate damage this time around. Uh, that Pokemon is a very high attack stat. If you're not familiar with it, um, you know, it's uh, this strange, you know, Brazilian bot looking thing. Uh, it's very sharp. <laughs> yeah, very pointy. But also very scared. Very pointy edges on the iron that leaves by there, but no attacks on the turn, just to protect. There's a Choice Max Volt Switch with the Electric Terrain and Hadron Engine, just so much massive amounts of damage into Cowrex Ice Rider on the other side. So the question, Javier deciding Incineroar or Iron Hands in that last slot. They already got some solid damage into uh, the Ice Rider. Yeah, but scary, right? There's a pretty 
realistic chance you're switching straight into an Ivy Cudgel since he already knows there was no follow me. Uh, could be a lot of damage on the incinerator. We'll have to see what this Ogre Pond chose to do. Intimidate will be effective onto both of Hirofumi's Pokemon as they are physical attackers. Here's the Ivy Cudgel. That's a rock type into fire, but no critical hit means Incineroar gets to stay on the field. And we saw last game just how little damage an intimidated Glacial Lance does to Incineroar. It means it will hang on in the red. Yeah, I mean, now it has the option of just getting a fake out or something, but uh, really taking a lot of damage on the way in. Uh, nice read to attack that slot and the protect from uh, the Iron Leaves there just for not. Iron Leaves will swap onto the field here, on high, or swap out of the field, I should say. Maridon replacing it there. So we still haven't seen any action. We've confirmed it's real, but we've not seen it actually go for any attacks yet. Spiky Shield from Ogre Pond Cornerstone wanting to keep itself safe in case the fake out goes in that direction. And to protect as well from Kaurax Ice Rider. So here Fumi really playing it slow with the potential of the fake out on the other side. Fake out goes towards Kaurax Protect. A nice safe play by Hirofumi there, right? He's got an early lead once again uh, and has nearly whittled down this Incineroar and, you know, not doing anything silly, right? Uh, he still has the ability to follow me now with a fully healthy Ogre Pond. Doesn't need to do anything too crazy just yet. And uh, it's kind of actually easier for him now that the Iron Leagues is off the field where there's kind of uh, fewer options for Javier. And that's why Ogre Pond Cornerstone is, is my favorite supportive the Ogre Pond of, of the four versions of it because with its uh, ability sturdy, you're essentially guaranteed follow me. You can redirect both attacks towards that slot. One, leaving Kaurex healthy, but also letting it guaranteed set up Trick Room. Yeah, well, this even go bothers to go for it, right? Where we got two slower Pokemon as Javier's other two, as you see the Iron Hands enter the field here. And yeah, you can just knock the Mariah out. Uh, and I guess the Iron Leaves as well. You know, you don't need the Trick Room for these other Pokemon. Yeah, well, Iron Leaves is going to, or excuse me, Iron Hands is going to swap onto the field, activating it's the Electric Seed, giving it a defense boost. Quark Drive giving it an attack boost as well. So if a Glacial Lantern Ivy Cudge will go into that slot, it's going to be doing less damage because of the defense boost. Now here, Fumi will terrestrial. Kaurax Ice Rider yet again in this game to the poison typing, just changing how the matchup works. Ivy Cut, or excuse me, uh, Ogre Pond Cornerstone with its follow me redirecting Volt Switch away. That's uh, that's a lot of damage uh, considering how you can try to make bulky uh, the Ogre Pond does still 50%. Yeah, but now what do you do, right? You need to switch Incineroar in. Uh, if it's not a Trick Room, it's just going to immediately go down here and lose its Intimidate uh, in favor of a boost from the ability right the glacial lance or the uh, as one ability would essentially negate the intimidate on this spot here so there is the glacial lance connecting onto both of course incineroar goes down hardly anything to the iron hands but you're gonna get one boost so this should bring uh this should bring cowards ice starter back down to minus one since it's been intimidated twice yeah and now we see uh, I assume, I guess, the, the hero Iron Leaves will have to come back out and help try to deal some damage here. But, uh, you know, now it's a rough spot where, uh, you know, it's pretty uncommon to see this poison terror type, but it really is annoying for this uh, Iron Hands who otherwise might like to use its fighting type attacks. Uh, or even the Mirai Island, right, who we've seen it using fairy type attacks earlier in the match, and hey, you know, poison resists that too. And one of the great things in this matchup, particularly Scott, of why you see so many Trick Room teams with Ice Rider using Ogre Pond Cornerstone instead of Amoongus, Iron Leaves would have a field day because it, as a grass type, you wouldn't care about Rage Powder, but you can't get a, you can't get around the follow me. Yeah, and I, that looks really good here, right? Because otherwise, this would just be a pin. Uh, we see the, the consideration of the normal type terrestrialization, which you don't see too often here, but would critically remove that weakness to the uh, attack from Calyrex. Yeah, so both the this sturdy Ogre Pond Cornerstone remaining on the field has just been so crucial for here Fumi in game two. Remember, he hasn't even set up Trick Room on any of these turns. That's how confident he's feeling right now. But yes, believe it or not, Iron Leaves is terrestrializing into a normal type. You'd usually use this as a Calyrex Shadow Rider counter, so you're immune to Astro Barrage, but you might as well get rid of the Glacial Lance weakness while you're at it. So this Glacial Lance will not be doing too much damage to either of Javier's Pokemon. Ogre Pond does protect itself there, so Iron Leaves will take a little bit of recoil damage from the spiky shield. And that is an attack into Calyrex, but it's not enough for the knockout. So he will be able to Glacial Lance in response doing over half to iron leaves 
Oh, that's kind of devastating, right? Where now you basically have to protect the uh, Iron Leaves while Iron Hands tries to pick up the knockout and then Ogre Pond, you know, lets the Calyrex attack again for free. Um, and I think that's predictable enough that Hirofumi, if he wants to, could go for his very first switch of the match somehow <laughs> uh, and perhaps mix things up a little bit. Yeah, that's right. Hirofumi still hasn't, not as he not revealed the fourth Pokemon, hasn't revealed the third Pokemon in this matchup. So it's just showing how much of a commanding position he is in right now. Iron Leaves will protect in that moment there. Doesn't want to take damage. Finally, the Drain Punch from Iron Hands is going to be more than enough to knock out Ogre Pond Cornerstone. Bringing the Iron Hands out really healthy as well from the recovery that Drain Punch uh, gives to that slot. But, uh, you know, at some point, this damage is eventually going to stick from <laughs> Glacial Lance. It's only hitting Iron Hands here, who has a plus one defense, and no critical hits means it's not doing a lot. Well, uh, that was a sad glacial answer. I see the Iron Hand just shrugging that one off. Uh, gains HP over the course of the turn. But uh, on the flip side, you know, we, we see the resources of Javier's side starting to whittle down, right? Now that Protect has been used. Do not want to allow it to be attacked by either of these Pokemon. And it's highly unsafe to try to switch the Muridon in either. So uh, very likely now that Hurufumi will take another knockout on this next turn. Right, and effectively the Dazzling Gleam from this Flutterman that just swapped in, it's gonna be great into everything. You can either, uh, Iron Leaves already half HP, so you don't have to worry about that. Maridon on the switch in is a Dragon type weak to fairy. Iron Hands weak, er, weak to fairy as well. I mean, this is a just a really solid spot for Hirofumi. Yeah, and once again, the Fluttermane loving the fact that this Terrastalization has already been committed. It knows it can stay uh, with those super effective fairy type attacks. No option to Terrastalize away from them. Yeah, and I'm not, I haven't done my Iron Leaves calcs, but I'm not really sure how strong <laughs> Iron Leaves is defensively against Fluttermane with that really strong special attack stat. It's been kind of a menace of the format for the last year plus. But Moonblast into Iron Hands is not enough for the knockout. It's gonna hang on in the red. Now Iron Leaves gets to go for its attack into uh, the Calyrex there. So really cool animation, really happy. I've finally been able to see what Iron Leaves does in this matchup. Get to knock out, but this Fluttermane has been left alone, and the Thunder Punch is nowhere near enough damage to even threaten a two-hit KO. Yeah, like that, someone that almost makes the situation worse, right, where you get rid of the uh, the Calyrex, who wasn't doing a whole lot anyway, and now Fluttermane could be not, uh, uh, threatening a knockout on either of these Pokemon, which makes these a little bit tricky. Um, I guess the most positive part of a situation for Javier is at least, you know, at some point likely going to be able to get that Muridon in safely, but um, these are two tough Pokemon for it to face down. Yeah, I guess a, a, the one benefit is that Iron Leaves have access to protect yet again, right? So, uh, you know, Iron Hands is never really getting an attack off. It's the slowest Pokemon. Let it go down this turn. Let Muridon reactivate Electric Terrain, reactivating Quark Drive. That might be what Javier uh, could be going for, but just oh, there's so much HP remaining on here at Fumi's end. Yeah, I mean, you, I think you probably have to sacrifice something here as Javier, or you just make a really aggressive read and hope for a mistake. All right, so not actually letting Iron Hands get knocked out. Instead, going for the Detect this turn and choosing for Iron Leaves to be the target that gets thunderclapped and KO'd here in game two. Now Javier is down to his last two Pokemon. It's gonna be that Maridon and Iron Hands, his Electric Core, his Quark Drive Core versus Fluttermane and Raging Bolt on the other end. Yeah, we saw uh, poor Javier there not loving it, which, uh, yeah, you, you kind of uh, spoke to Iron Leaves' uh, questionable defensive stats. Uh, that Thunderclap <laughs> picking up the knockout there uh, perhaps the beginning, uh, well, maybe the middle of the end here where uh, that low health Iron Hands is going to have a hard time making a move, and now Mirai is going to have to commit to an attack against these Pokemon. Yeah, and you can't necessarily, if you want to do a Draco Meteor into the uh, Assault Vest uh, Rage Bolt on the other end, well, then you'll literally never hit Fluttermane as long as the game lasts. So this Mirai Nine is really pinned into a difficult position. Yeah, I needed one more knockout before I get to this point. Once again, Hurufumi just trading so well early in the game, putting Javier in a situation where even though he kept even on the Pokemon count, the board state is just too far behind. Yeah, you got to give credit to Iron Hands and Iron Leaves. You can you can see how Javier has gotten to this position of 5-0. and oh. You can see the synergy that the team has, but unfortunately, uh, the lack of flexibility of, you know, maybe Whimsicott not being that great or uh, the Trastalization not being as effective as Javier might have wanted, uh, leading to the benefit of Hirofumi here. He goes for the double D-Tech. Same properties as Protect, but he doesn't get it. Regardless, Fluttermane is going to be able to pick up the KO onto the Iron Hands. 
lands. Now Maradon down to half HP. The question is, where is he targeted? It's actually a discharge into both of them, but no critical hits means they both stick around. And Draco Meteor picking up the last KO and Japan rejoicing as Hirofumi Kimura will guarantee at least a position in day two of the World Championships tomorrow. Hirofumi looking clean there. He is yeah. a world finalist and showing why. Excellent set by him. And uh, you, know, you really have to be impressed by that, right? You just, uh, I, think, but I think he never switched at all at any point in the set, right? I don't know if I've ever <laughs> seen anyone win a game Whoa, that way at the World